So, people, today I have discovered a new fantasy series. A great one as well. Hello, fellow requesters, it is I, Aaron the Requester, and today I got this great, great book, the first book in the Darkest Rising sequence, Oversea, Understone, by Susan Cooper herself, and well, let's get right on to it. So, this book is about two, three, well, three siblings named Barney, Jane, and Simon. They are adventurous kids, and they are currently going to Trucewick to go to their great uncle Mary's house. And they're staying with him at this place called the Grey House. And they're just gonna stay and stay there for the vacation. However, one day, on, on rainy day, they find a secret attic, and they also find a parchment. A parchment that seems to write in Latin. Something about King Arthur and Sir Mark. And meanwhile, this these people named Mr. and Miss Wicked comes over and they want they invite them to go to the yacht. They seem overly friendly and they seem like nice people. However, Jane has a gut feeling that these people were up to no good. Which is, you know, kinda scary. And by the way, one comment about that I really like that foreshadowing right there, cause like, that when you say, when you have the instinctive feeling within a fantasy book, if the character has an instinctive feeling that the, that character is not good, it's either that the character is a good guy, and the one, and the one, and it's a reverse uno basically, the one that seems good, it isn't. Like, for example, the classic example, classic example of Severus Snape and Quirrell, and Professor Quirrell, in Harry Potter book 1, The Philosopher's Stone. That's the first point. Or it is like a foreshadowing of what's to come. And usually the character is like, cannot, can't trust that particular character, and has a very good reason to. So as fantasy readers, we tend to kind of eye that properly. And after the first four chapters, I knew that alarm bells were ringing, that this was a good old fantasy book. And there were, there's four more books, so I'm super excited. Anyway, on to the plot. So, then they decide that things are getting scary and a burglar had broken and obviously wanted to look for the parchment. Then they had leaked the story of the parchment to this man, this man who claimed to be the vicar. And basically, they, know, they knew that they needed to tell a adult. And they, basically, they go ahead and they tell great uncle Mary. And Great Uncle Mary basically goes ahead and manages to read the thing, the parchment, because it is a very, very old piece. And it basically says something about the old land and the great good and the great good, the, the fight between great good and great darkness, the light and the dark fighting. And there has never been a victor to this fight. However, there are battles, and if one side loses, well, it's impossible for them to lose because each man has a bit of the dark and a bit of the light inside their hearts. And basically what this basically talks about is King Arthur and this artifact that seems to like hold the key to bring back the light and etc. So basically it's a race for them to find whatever this artifact was that this parchment led them to before the bad guys. And they basically managed to decode the parchment, thinking that it might be some sort of map where they had to follow clues. And it was kind of like scavenger hunt. One clue leads them to the next clue, which leads them to the next clue, and then until they manage to find whatever artifact. It said something about a chalice. Who knows? And so they start going on questing and get some close calls with Miss Wicked and Mr. Wicked, who's going full on evil mode now. And, well, it's really just not good. And this man named Mr. Hastings even kidnaps dear old Barney. And he seems to be up to no good as well. Meanwhile, they have found where this, is, this artifact is supposedly hidden. In some sort of underwater cave that only came out when the tide was out. Can these three kids manage to get whatever artifact there is? And then... Finally, well, not finally, can they manage to win over the bad guys and let the light come back? Who knows? You'll have to read the book. 
And honestly, I'm just excited for book two. On a big fantasy reader's perspective, it was a very typically... They used the formula. They used the typical victory formula. The, the, the foreshadowing, then the typical evil, and then this a bigger story that we are unsure of until now. This bigger, grander scheme. And then the, good, the great good, like for example, Mr. R.D. Mary is probably who represents Dumbledore in... In, well, in Harry Potter terms, of course. And all in all, I think it's a very well-written, well-formulated book, and I highly enjoyed it, and the narrative was also, as I said, very well-written. And if I remember correctly, this has some sort of Newberry honor, or, or maybe that's book two, I don't know. I'll put it in the description after I look at it. Anyway, thanks for watching, have a great day, and like always, your book questioner, Aaron the Buckquester. Goodbye! And yeah, definitely read the book.